Hey guys, it's time to install that function unit we made last week on an FPGA. I went ahead and chose the Basis 2 FPGA, um, mainly just due to me having it already ready to roll and the simplicity and the inputs and outputs already tied to the board. If you haven't seen that previous video, the link is below. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and open up ISE. Uh, we'll just type in ISE here. And while that's opening, I'll take you to my GitHub account. And uh, all the stuff that we need for this is on here. We won't we won't wind up using it all. Uh, we don't need the test beds. We're not going to do the test beds for this one. Uh, we'll click OK. Let's click on a file, new project. And I'm going to call this function unit and click next. Now for the basis two, we're going to go through and make sure all these values are selected. Uh, you can freeze this screen if you'd like. And then we'll hit next and then we'll click finish. So now we're starting with the bare design. Uh, we're going to go project new source and we're going to put in some Verilog modules. So I'm going to click on Verilog module. Now with these names, we've got to make sure that it's the same name as the unit that we're selecting here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up on my GitHub uh, link down below the arithmetic logic unit. And then we'll go down and uh, find the name of the module, which is right here. It's a arithmetic logic unit. I'm going to right click on that copy. I'm going to go back into ISE and I'm just going to paste that directly into the file name. And then I'm going to hit next. And I'll just skip the inputs and outputs because those will be in the file and click on finish. Now that we've got that open, what we can do is go through and copy all the code in here and just throw it directly into that module. Now what we can do is save all that. So now we're going to go ahead and add another source, project, new source. Make sure we click on Verilog module. We'll go back to our browser and uh, we'll click on shifter.v. And then we're going to go ahead and select this name down here, shifter. We're going to copy that. And we're going to put that in the name for file name here. And click next, next, finish. Uh, then we can select all of this and erase it and we will select all the code from inside of shifter and we'll just paste that inside of the module here and then we'll save all of that and we're going to do the same thing again we're kind of just adding all of our sources uh, it's going to be another very long module this is going to be the function unit module so we'll go ahead and click on function unit the homework two one uh, we're going to make sure that the name is the same i mean you can go through and change these names if you want uh, just make sure that they coincide and then we'll go into ISE. We're going to paste that name in there. We're going to hit next, next, finish. Then we're going to select all that stuff. We'll go through and select all of this stuff, all of the code from the module. Don't highlight anything else. Copy that. And then we're going to put it into here. So we'll paste it into this module. Now at this point, if you click on save, you'll see that it'll rearrange your hierarchy here. Um, but we still got more to go. So let's do project new source. We're going to do one more Verilog module. And this is going to be our top module. So we'll back up here and we'll go to top.v. Now this has been added since uh, the last video. This is just to test out this code on the basis too. So we'll go back into ISE. Um, well, I know it's just top.v, so we'll call it top dot v next next finish and then i'm going to select all of that and i'll just paste in all the info from there and now when we save this you'll see that it's an even taller hierarchy here and we have one more code to put in but it's not a very long source so this is going to be our constraints file and we can call that what we want i'm going to call it pins and we'll hit next and finish and it'll make that for us and then we can go into our chromium browser and find the pins.ucf and that's our ucf file and you just want to highlight all of this and copy and paste that in as well now remember that this is only for the basis to fpga if you're using a different fpga you're gonna to have to figure out the pinout or uh, find a different PGA, fpga file if you need help with that uh, leave a comment below we'll see what we can do to help you out with that now we'll save all of that and it seems to be fine. I don't have any warnings or errors. So let me run the generate programming file and see what we missed. 
All right, that seemed to run without errors. Uh, we have a few warnings. The inner carry warning, uh, PSR right, uh, which we don't actually need. It's tied to zero, so uh, you can erase it if you want or just leave it in there and let it be zero. Uh, SH is used but never assigned. That's because in this top module here, we used it. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, SH, let's see, and then uh, F31 down to four is never used uh, because we're just testing this module. So let's talk about that a little bit here. Um, this is the top module. Uh, we'll start from the top of the top module. Uh, all we've got coming in is the U clock and a button, and the rest are outputs of the LEDs on the board. Uh, we set up the word size and count size as we had previously. These are just parameters set up top so that you can change it once and have it changed throughout. Uh, two more parameters for our A and B registers. I went ahead and just statically set those to three and two. What you can do is go through and set maybe your switches to one of the registers or make some other inputs registers or change the registers as it goes. Um, ultimately, this is going to go into a processor, right? So, so these numbers that come from these registers will be the actual registers that are fed from other things. Um, but for the purposes of this, just testing out the design, we're just going to statically assign those. Then we just state which are inputs and which are outputs. So we've got uh, the clock as an input, button as an input, and then the LEDs as an output. I left a table in here just kind of telling you what uh, how FS is broken out into G and H so that when you look at this later, you can more easily mess with it. I've also got a file that we'll look at here in a little bit that I will upload to the, the GitHub as well that will help with all that sort of thing. Um, so from here down, let's see, we've got a register. We made a counter uh, just to move through the functions of, of the ALU. Um, we've got a debounce for the button. We have a value for old button so that we can find the uh, rising edge on the button um, just for switching through the FS codes. Uh, we've got a wire for our A register, a wire for our B register, a register for the SH code, which we're just going to leave equal to two. Uh, we'll hard set that as well. We don't need any more than two shifts and we can tell if it's working. Um, if you want to test all the edges, then you might go through and do that as well. Um, and then of course we've got a wire for our FS which is ultimately going to equal counter um, from the top down to the bottom. So I just called it counter size minus one, then uh, counter size minus five. And I'd set that up that way so that I could run it through fastly and just watch real quick that it worked. Uh, then I set it up to a button so that I could go through and see, you know, are these the right values? So if you wanted, you could change the counter size uh, and then just run this thing based off the clock and see that it's working up front, right? Uh, then we've got a wire for our F, which is our output, our total output, and we're going to tie that to the LEDs. Uh, and then we've got wires for our V, C, N, and Z, um, which is our overflow, carry, negative, and zero flags. And then I'd set up this wire for E and A. I was doing a, a bit of playing around with the debounce and uh, the up signal, so you'll see that down below. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and instantiate the function unit here. I instantiate it as FU1. Uh, I bring in all my inputs and all my outputs. I tend to name them all the same thing. Uh, it just works well for me in my mind. It may confuse things for you. Uh, do what's best for you. Uh, then we have an always block just to take uh, the value of and DB button, which is our debounced value of button, and put that into an old button value to hold it for a clock. Uh, then we've got our debouncing block, um, which is just to take and shift in the button value to the very end. So we put the button value into zero and then we shift it over by one every clock tick. Uh, and then we'll end that value to get a debounce signal, right? Then inside of this next block, this is just a counter. Uh, so if, if E and A, which we assign down here to be and DB button and, and not old button. So basically the debounce button, if that's one, and if the old button is zero, so if we're on a rising edge, a debounced rising edge, then E and A will be one. If E and A is one, then we'll set the counter up by one. Basically, that just makes it so that every time we click that button, we'll go to the next FS code, and we'll see how those FS codes are laid out um, if you didn't see up above. Then all we do is assign our LEDs. Uh, so I basically just took the bottom four values of the output and assigned them to the bottom four LEDs. Uh, and then I assigned V, C, N, and Z to the rest of the LEDs. Now this seems to have generated just fine. Um, so what we'll do, we'll go ahead and program this to the FPGA. Um, I've got that hooked up. I'll get a camera. Let me go ahead and get a camera set up for you guys. I'll be right back. Okay, now that we've got the basis hooked up, uh, let's go ahead and bring up a new terminal. I can't ever remember the name of the program for programming the basis to. So what I'm gonna do is just do a grep. 
of my um, history. And what I'm going to look for, I think, is DJ is how it starts. So I'm going to type DJ and then dot bash underscore history. And that'll go through and find all the all the commands from my history that had matched that actual search term. Uh, so what I'll do, uh, let's go ahead and make sure that the FPGA is there by teaching by typing the DJTGCFG enum. Uh, and I will post these down below as well so that you can reference that. So I'm going to paste that. Uh, it's there. Now we're going to do the initiate. So we're going to enumerate. Then we're going to initiate. And that seems to be up and running. And then we've got our last command here, um, which I've gone through and found the file. But I'll show you guys where it's at, um, just in case you didn't watch my other basis video, which is also posted down below. Um, so this is to program. Uh, the basis two, we're going to program the zero slot. And actually, it doesn't have my uh, my file path correct here, so I may have picked the wrong line. So I'm going to go find that file real quick. I'm just going to go into my files. Uh, mine's going to be under, we just did this function unit, right? Then we're going to find our top bit, and we're going to right-click properties. And we're going to select the parent folder path. And we'll copy that and we're going to paste this in here oh and i just pasted it right on top of that other one so i'm going to erase the rest of that and it was called top dot bit so i'll just put forward slash top dot b i t now once i click on this we had forgotten something uh, so i'm going to click no and that's part of the gig here we've got to do this one step at a time right so for some reason, this design on the basis two does not like the JTAG clock. So what I did, I went through and changed these. Yours should work just fine. Uh, it may just be something in my setup here, but I changed these to uh, M clock, M clock, and then in each loop, M clock, M clock, M clock. Then I went into my pins UCF, commented out the U clock lines and uncommented the M clock lines. Then after that, you've got to go into Generate Programming File, Process Properties, and we've got to change this back to CC Clock. Click OK, click Apply. Uh, then you go into here, and what you do, you know, you go through and do your normal initiate or enumerate, initiate, but then you use zero instead of one on here because if you remember right, the actual ROM is run through device zero, and just programming via the computer will be run through device one. So I've got it up and running now. I uh, went ahead and programmed it. It takes a little bit of time, but not a big deal. You can see that I programmed it right here. Um, so what we'll do, I'll pull up this window that has kind of the instruction set list and numbered along with the clock, right? So you've got uh, the clock will go through all of these different iterations here. This is what the function unit is telling the ALU to do. And this should be our answer along the way. Some of these, like in the shifting, if you remember right, uh, V and C, I think, aren't set in the shifter unit. They're just set in the ALU. Uh, so these really won't be in line with that sort of thing. But the right-hand side should be correct. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the FPGA. And you'll note that it starts out with the first code here, which is uh, 3 or 1-1. One, one. What we'll do, we'll go through this list. This list represents the LEDs. So the, the bottom four LEDs should represent the actual number coming out of the FPGA. Uh, since it's a 32-bit register, I decided to just use the bottom four and use small numbers so that we can make sure it works. The other two here, or the other four here, represent Z, N, C, and V as posted here. So you see Z, N, C, V, and then you have your actual number on the last four here. So what you see for this code going through to the FS on this one is just two because there was no Z, N, C, or V flag emitted from this process, right? So let's go ahead and we'll hit this button over here and that'll help us cycle through. So we hit once, go to the next code, should be four uh, with no flags. And then we should have five with no flags. And then we'll have six with no flags. And on the next one, we should have zero, but we'll have a zero flag and we should have overflow and carryover since it was a negation and an add from a negation. So when you negate, you get all ones. And when you add, you're gonna get an overflow there. And then from the negative, you also negate, but you negate and add one to do a proper negative number. And then you add that to the other number and that should be a, a subtraction. So we should get a carryover and a overflow flag and the resulting number, which is one. Then from there, we should just get two and then three. Now we'll move into the other codes, which are the logic codes. So this very last digit on here does not 
matter. It's a don't care condition. So we'll actually get two of these, one for each FS code that could represent it. So these are don't care. These numbers are what matter. So we should get two twice. So we'll click it once. There's our two and we'll click it again and another two. And then we move to the next one, which is an or gate and we should get three and we'll get another three. And then we'll go to the XOR gate where we'll get one and another one. And then we move from there to the NOT gate. And of course, when we NOT A, it turns into a negative number. And that negative number produces the very end to be a carryover. And we get the actual number, which is 12 from the last four digits there. The actual number will be bigger than that. But since we're only working with four of the 32, it's just 12. So we get that again. And then we'll move to the shifting unit. Now, the shifting unit doesn't have any conditions on two of our flags. Uh, so the flags really don't matter with most of these shifts. So we'll move into the shifting with the next click and we just get two. And since there's basically a don't care on the other four, we may see some other things come out of it. But really with this, we're just interested in the actual shifts. So we should get two again, two again, two again. Now the next one, we should shift to the left and that'll result in an eight. And we get eight, but we see some erroneous things happening with the carryover flags. So let's try that again and more erroneous things, but we still have eight and again, now there's no flags, but we still have eight and again, no flags and eight. The next one will be shifting to the right and that'll push all of the digits out of the actual register. So we'll have all zeros. So we'll shift through those or we'll go through those codes and we get to the entire don't care condition or the default condition of the shifter. Uh, and that should just produce all zeros. So we'll shift through those and see if we can get back around to the very first code, which is just a pass through of A. And there we have it. So that's the function unit implemented. If you have any questions, uh, ask down below. Uh, if there's something you'd like me to change, uh, maybe you see something in here that I could fix or do better. Please, please comment below. I'm not at all an expert at this sort of thing and we're all always learning. Have a great day and don't forget to love well.